Joining us right now to talk more about the fallout from Silicon Valley Bank is former venture capitalist, California Congressman Josh Harder, whose district has been directly impacted by that bank's failure. Congressman Harder, first of all, thank you for being here this morning. Um, what, what do you think of the proposal or the plan that was put together by Treasury and, uh, by Treasury and uh, the Federal Reserve? I think it's a very important first step. When people hear the name Silicon Valley Bank, they think this is about the bank accounts of, of Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. That's not who's affected by this at all. Uh, this is folks like the the craft company Etsy, which pays its mom and pop merchants all across the company country through Silicon Valley Bank. This is about uh, farm workers in the agricultural and winemaking parts of of my district that are paid through Silicon Valley Bank. And so I think the regulators made the right first step to make it very clear that depositors are going to be held innocent uh, and 100 percent protected this morning, as well as an effort to make sure that what happened in Silicon Valley Bank doesn't spread to other adjacent banks this morning. Congressman, I, let me just walk through some of this. We were just talking to Roger Altman, and he laid out some of the bigger long-term concerns. This may have been the right move in the short term when there was no buyer to be found, no private buyer. However, what has essentially been done is guaranteeing the deposits of every bank out there basically forever. No one is going to think that any bank will be allowed to fail without the depositors at least being made whole. And I wonder what that means for putting taxpayer dollars at risk down the road. Right now, this is something that's going to be financed by the FDIC. Um, but the FDIC, which is simply money that the banks themselves pay into, has about $125 billion right now. If you look at their, their balance that they've had over time, at times it's been negative when there have been big bank failures. At, at some point, is this going to mean that the U.S. taxpayer is now guaranteeing every depositor who ever puts money down anywhere, and it's, it's back on the taxpayers to take care of that? I think we're at a real inflection point for small, mid-sized regional banking across America, possibly uh, a more important inflection point than the financial crisis or, or the savings and loan crisis in the 80s. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank saw $42 billion of withdrawals within 24 hours, the, long, the largest bank run, the fastest bank run in history. Uh, this is the digital era. It's no longer It's a Wonderful Life. Confidence can disappear faster than a Snapchat message, and right. we're going to need stronger reform to make sure that this doesn't happen uh, uh, faster across uh, across other banks. So, what does that reform look like? What what needs to happen? Because as we've been talking about here this morning, Barney Frank of Dodd Frank himself was on the board of directors at Signature Bank, the other bank that was taken under over the weekend. We have so to if, do three if things. That's not going to be if that's not going to be enough to have Barney Frank sitting right. on your board. What are regulators going to do? What went wrong this time? And how do you prevent it from happening again? Three things. Uh, first, we have to monitor the situation very closely over the next 24 hours to prevent contagion, to make sure that we're protecting uh, depositors. That is uh, a continuation of the emergency measures that regulators have already uh, have already made. And hopefully more won't be necessary. But if it is, I hope we hear from the president a strong commitment to doing whatever is necessary to make sure that this contagion doesn't spread. But Wait, second, we need an investigation. Uh, of what happened at Silicon Valley Bank, uh, making sure that we are looking at uh, regulators, that we're asleep at the wheel, as well as the mistakes made by bank management. And third, we're going to need long-term reform. I think we need to change the insurance limits uh, at these banks. It's clear that it doesn't uh, reflect reality right now. Uh, as you said, this is now an implicit guarantee for a lot of uninsured deposits across the country.